Now on KMTV Action 3 News Live at 10, Second Life for Stogies. Why smoking will go on in some Nebraska bars. Plus, major makeover. The neighborhood effort to revitalize one of Omaha's oldest parks. And final goodbyes. Did an Omaha man know he was about to die moments before a confrontation with police? What image is etched in the heads of old friends? KMTV Action 3 News Live at 10 starts now with your weather alert first forecast. Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Jim Flowers in the Control Comfort Weather Center. We've been outdoors at all this evening. It's getting cold out. Three, last report in Omaha. It's already dropped to nine below in Denison and four below in Atlantic. Everyone's going to start out tomorrow below zero. The only question is how far. Could be looking at a, a record tying low here in the metro. And as far as uh, threat trackers concerned, snow on the way for Saturday. More on that coming up. I got a question for the police though. I just want to know why you didn't spend more than a minute and 38 on my husband. Serious questions from the wife of a man shot and killed by an Omaha police officer and revealing information about the deadly confrontation that lasted less than two minutes. It was a split second decision to shoot that will now go to a grand jury. Good evening. I'm Jennifer Griswold and I'm Craig DeGrelli. The Omaha police chief laid out the timeline of what happened in South Omaha on Monday night. Tonight, Danny Elrod's friends tell us he was in a bad frame of mind that night. Reporter Kelly Bartnick is live in the news center with the story. Kelly. Craig, Elrod's wife sat down today to talk about the shooting, and Danny Elrod's friends are weighing in, too. They live just blocks from the Family Dollar store and were among the last to see him. Chad Harney and Christine Weimer were among the last people to see 39-year-old Danny Elrod alive. He said he was saying his goodbyes and making amends with us. He wanted to say bye to his dog, his wife, his kid. They had not spoken for months after a falling out while the Elrod family roomed with Harney and Weimer last fall. He stopped by just before he robbed this 13th Street family dollar store. You just see in his face how much hurt, how much pain he was in. I've never seen that before, ever. Omaha police released this image of the robbery. It happened 10 minutes after Elrod left his friend's home. Police haven't ruled out suicide by cop, neither have Elrod's friends. Thursday, his wife Amanda criticized police actions responding to the robbery call. You know, they ought, I think they ought to feel ashamed of themselves ago. We spent a whole minute and 38 on my husband. A minute and 38 seconds on, my, on an unarmed man, and they took him from me. More photos show police trying to stop Elrod, even tasing him. When Officer Alvin Lugod warned, he would fire and eventually did. Two of the three shots hit Elrod. Detail for detail, all I can tell you really is that I miss him and I love him. And he, they took my whole world from me. Harney and Weimer say Elrod tearily told them Amanda wouldn't meet with him, all in their last conversation. I mean, I'm not saying he's the best person. I'm not saying he's not guilty because... He did what he did. He obviously robbed the store, <laughs> but that's not him. Amanda Elrod has hired an attorney. She says she was at the scene when police shot her husband. Police Chief, uh, police Chief Taj Moderer said today she would not cooperate with officers on the scene and refused follow up requests. In the news center tonight, Kelly Barton at KMTV Action 3 News. All right, Kelly, at a press conference this morning, Omaha Police Chief Todd Schmatter said the police shooting does not appear to be criminal. Based on Mr. Elrod's actions, going into his waistband, making reference that he had a gun, asking the officers to shoot him, ignoring the commands, when he did not have a weapon, does play into elements of suicide by cop. Chief Schmatter also said it's possible Elrod was standing on an SUV because he was trying to jump over the fence there. Douglas County Attorney Don Klein said the case will go to a grand jury in March. The panel must decide if the shooting was reasonable or a crime. New at 10, an Omaha man is in jail accused of hitting a Bellevue police officer in the head. Officers saw Tyrell Knight riding a child's bike and carrying a large plastic bin. When they went to ask him what was going on, they say he hit the officer twice and took off. 
ABLE ONE HELICOPTER HELPED BELLEVUE POLICE FIND KNIGHT HIDING IN A SHED NEAR 30TH AND GREEN AVENUE. POLICE SAY INSIDE THE BIN THEY FOUND VIDEO GAMES AND OTHER ITEMS STOLEN FROM A NEARBY HOME. NEBRASKA GOVERNOR PETE RICKETTS HAS SIGNED A BILL TO KEEP CIGAR BARS IN BUSINESSES. THE NEW LAW ALLOWS CIGAR SMOKING IN LICENSED ESTABLISHMENTS. A STATE SENATOR INTRODUCED THE BILL AFTER THE NEBRASKA SUPREME COURT STRUCK DOWN INDOOR SMOKING AT CIGAR BARS, HOTEL GUEST ROOMS AND TOBACCO ONLY RETAILERS. THE CHANGE TAKES EFFECT immediately. Tonight, one of Omaha's oldest parks is about to get a half million dollar upgrade. Hanscom Park has rolling hills, a pond, and 100-year-old trees, but in recent years it has fallen into disrepair. Reporter Kevin Bouton is live with how the city and people who live nearby are working to fix it. Kevin. Craig, we got our camera light on. We've got lights on our car on right now, but it's still pretty hard to see here at Hanscom Park after dark. That's why it's no surprise requests for more lights came up multiple times tonight. But city leaders and local moms say more lighting isn't the most pressing issue here. The swing set and playground at Hanscom Park may look inviting, but it's not always welcoming. Or this uh, summer we brought her down to the park for the first time and the tire swing had fallen off. Michaela Tallman and daughter Liliana live two blocks north. Um, there's just not a lot of equipment that's in good shape um, or that's really dynamic. In addition to aging equipment, the playground doesn't meet federal requirements about handicap accessibility. It doesn't have to. It was rebuilt in 1988, but hasn't moved since the park opened in the 1800s. It sits down in a bowl, and it's it's very hard to get to. So we want to make sure that if we do upgrades and we make we put a playground in there, we want everybody to be able to use it in Omaha. Parks Director Brooke Bench says the city has roughly $400,000 to renovate Hanscom, and is looking for community input on how to best spend that money. There's a lot more stories to tell about the parks. Aside from playground improvements, many want something done about the trash and making it easier to get into the park from the north side. Something Michaela says is difficult, especially with a stroller. Um, it's really hard to clear some of those curbs, and then you have to walk up and over grass medians as well to get there. Bench says the department won't be able to indulge everybody, but the playground is a top priority. It needs to be upgraded, um, and it is one of the busiest parks in Omaha. So we feel it would be, and it's the oldest. So I think it'll be a, a really neat thing to get done. Planned for the next couple of months, park planners will take the input tonight and incorporate that into a rough draft of blueprints. Then they'll take those blueprints to the community for more input. They say construction isn't likely to start until this time next year. Live in Omaha tonight, Kevin Bouton, KMTV, Action 3 News. The town made national headlines for its tough ordinance on housing illegal immigrants. Now Fremont Public Schools is implementing a dual language program. The superintendent is starting a pilot program with one kindergarten class this fall. The goal is to close the achievement gap between English language learners and other students. Some Fremont parents say this is exactly what their community needs. It's sad because I, I remember that I went through all that. And the parents sometimes get frustrated because they, I mean, they, there's nothing they can do. OPS has had a dual language program for more than a decade. The district says a recent evaluation showed students in the program outperformed their peers more than 75% of the time. Elsewhere, a bus crash caused some damage to a home in Lincoln today. Police say an SUV hit a city bus near 27th and P. The bus went onto a lawn and stopped just before hitting the home. You see the bus right there. The crash damaged some siding. Nobody was seriously hurt. Police did not ticket either driver. And this is terribly sad. One of the twin babies born in the back seat of a car just outside Lincoln three weeks ago did not make it. Savannah Clark died from brain and lung complications just two days after being born three months premature. She arrived as her parents tried to get from their Kansas home to Bryan East Hospital in Lincoln. Her twin brother, Caleb, is doing better. He's now three pounds. Doctors removed breathing tubes this week. An online survey is gathering support for a Plattsmouth teen facing charges in her sister's death. The Sarpy County Attorney's Office charged Taylor Hughes with motor vehicle homicide in juvenile court. 
Taylor, who was 17 at the time, turned left onto Platteview Road from Highway 75 last month. Her seven-year-old sister, Maddie, was a passenger in the SUV Taylor was driving. Maddie later died in the crash. More than 3,000 people have signed an online petition on change.org to drop the charges. A bad afternoon crash backed up traffic and sent someone to the hospital. Omaha Police tell Action 3 News paramedics transported one person to CHI Health with potentially critical injuries after extricating that patient. An SUV hit the back of a cargo truck around 115 this afternoon on I-480 southbound near Martha. Traffic was down to one lane as crews cleared the scene. Hi, meteorologist Jim Flowers is here. And Jen, I realize it's been worse in other parts of the country. Yeah. But when you walk outside tonight, <laughs> that cold blasts you right in the face. Yeah, I think you need a different word than cold. This is just something else. <laughs> okay, you know what? Well, I do the weather. You guys work on that other okay. word, okay? <laughs> I'll check back with you in a couple minutes. Brutal. Maybe. Yeah, exactly. Let's take a look at Threat Tracker going in to the weekend. We're looking at uh, Threat Trackers in the moderate category on Saturday. That for some snow. Now the models are pushed it back a little bit, more like Saturday evening, so the bulk of the day is looking dry. And then we drop into the low category again on Sunday as that light snow comes to an end. Outdoors right now, it's cold out, 3 degrees. Winds have diminished. They're now northwest currently at 5 miles an hour. Across the city, a little bit warmer in uh, West O here, 7 in Papillion, Miller also in Elkhorn. Check out these readings in Iowa. Denison up a little bit over last hour. They were at minus 9. They're up to minus 6. Minus 4, though, in Atlantic. One above in Tecama and one above in York. Now, local effects. Some of these colder spots like Tecama and Atlantic could see some very cold temperatures, uh, probably between 5 and 10 below tomorrow morning. Everyone else between about 4 and 6 below zero. Viper HD, for the most part tonight, is giving us a clean sweep. There may be few flurries here. There haven't been an awful lot of cloudiness, but that's about all that remains from a few flurries that developed late this afternoon. Regional radar not picking up much across the central U.S., although there have been some clouds beginning to increase from portions of Colorado back down into New Mexico. Generally clear skies now across the central U.S., and that has set the stage for a very cold night. Tomorrow morning, temperatures will likely begin the day again between about 4 and six below zero. Our record for tomorrow is six below, most recently set in 1962. Now, as far as the temperatures as we head toward the lunch hour, about where we topped out this afternoon, and then as we head into the late afternoon, readings will likely make it into the upper teens. Here, a little bit warmer from Lincoln and Beatrice back along that I-80 corridor with temperatures topping out in the lower 20s. The forecast then for tonight, readings will drop back to six below. Uh, threat tracker moderate category because of the cold overnight, but then temperatures rise tomorrow, so we'll drop it back into the uh, low category during the afternoon. The high tomorrow, 18. And again, as we head into Saturday, by late in the day, more toward the evening now, good chance of snow, 28. Sunshine on Sunday, up to 34. And then the balance of the forecast shows temperatures warming up. Some light snow on Monday, probably going over to some rain showers on Tuesday before going back over and probably ending as a little bit of light snow. In fact, on Tuesday, not bad temperatures there around 40. Let's take a look at tonight's weather alert kid. This is Alana. It is going to be cold or whatever yeah. adjectives you guys have come up brutal. with. Brutal. You like, you like brutal? It. We've settled on brutal. Uh -huh. Lung busting. Lung Whoa. busting. Oh, I like it. Yeah. You said Six below come up start. with something good, and you gave us like three minutes yeah. to think. <laughs> come up with something. You had time to Google it. <laughs> New term doesn't make me any more comfortable yeah, about it's it. It's still but... cold. Yeah, you haven't warmed up at no. all. No, Thanks, okay, Jim. well, we'll have to live with that. A clash over <laughs> cannabis is lighting up the nation's capital. Why some members of Congress want the mayor of D.C. arrested. Plus, the man behind the mask. We are learning more about the ISIS executioner known as Jihadi John. When severe weather strikes, KMTV Action 3 News and Jim Flowers always keep you covered by issuing a weather alert. There's no safer place in a storm. Make the switch to the only 4 o'clock news hour in Omaha, bringing you stories important to you at a time that works for your busy schedule. Plus an accurate forecast to help you plan your evening activities. Omaha's only 4 o'clock news choice.
Actually, Ford Truck Month means big savings on all remaining 2014 F-150s. Drive a new 4x4 Super Cab for just $199 a month or get 0% financing. And all F-150s receive a 5-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty or 2 years free maintenance during Truck Month at Ashley Ford. Whether it's the smell of fresh-baked cookies or a pot of your famous meatballs simmering on the stove, give everyone one more reason to gather in the kitchen. A custom remodel from Rebath 5-Day Kitchens. As the focal point of your home, you deserve your dream kitchen. So team up with our expert designers and let's get to work on a space that fits your tastes. Rebath does it all, even beautiful custom kitchens. Rebath and 5-Day Kitchens. Visit us at myheartlandhome.com. More excitement, more adventure, more tunes, more versatility. America's most exciting lineup is at your local Nissan store now. And now's the best time to get yours. Choose from 15 models with 0% APR financing for up to 60 months. Or save up to 2,500 on the 27 MPG Highway Pathfinder. Get to Nissan now. Offers end March 2nd. Shop ChooseNissan.com. Innovation that excites. In a major snow or snow emergency, follow the parking rules east of 72nd Street. Park on the odd number side of the street on odd numbered days. Park on the even number side of the street on even numbered days. For more information, visit cityofomaha.org. Supplier pricing on all new GMCs and Buicks. Plus, you keep the rebates. Roden Council Bluffs. When cold weather strikes, you can trust controlled comfort to keep the air inside your home under control. Controlled comfort keeps it under control. You're watching KMTV Action 3 News with Jennifer Griswold, Craig Negrelli, weather with meteorologist Jim Flowers, and sports with Phil Aldridge. This is KMTV Action 3 News, live at 10. The FCC has approved a new set of rules for the Internet. Net neutrality is a set of restrictions that stops Internet providers from blocking or slowing down apps, websites, or online services. Those in favor of the regulations argue that without them, companies could pay more to have their websites run faster, and that would price out some competition. People against net neutrality say the rules are another way the government is butting into business. The next president could shut down the new restrictions. Lawmakers are threatening legal action against the mayor after a new law to legalize marijuana use in Washington, D.C. took effect today. Tokers in D.C. can have two ounces of marijuana and grow up to six plants. Now the clash over cannabis is pitting Mayor Muriel Bowser against Republican lawmakers who want the feds to arrest her. The use of marijuana is still totally illegal under federal law. So it's not only the mayor, but anybody who uses marijuana under this law theoretically could be punished under federal laws. The mayor claims she is on very strong legal ground. It is still illegal to sell marijuana in the nation's capital. We are learning more about the masked men, man who appears in ISIS videos beheading hostages. Intelligence officials say the man, known as Jihadi John, is from Britain. His name is Mohammed Mwazi. He was born in Kuwait and grew up in a wealthy family in London. He has a degree in computer programming. Authorities believe Mwazi traveled to Syria around 2012 and later joined the terrorist group ISIS. Still no compromise tonight on the battle over funding the Department of Homeland Security. Earlier this week, Democrats blocked a bill to pay for the department after Republicans tied it to provisions that would repeal President Obama's executive action on immigration. House Speaker John Boehner is pushing a short-term plan. The agency will shut down tomorrow unless lawmakers approve funding. Llama drama in the desert. The effort to corral the animals running loose in city streets. Plus, kiss cam. What prompted House Speaker Boehner to pucker up for a reporter today and the reaction in the room. We want to make sure that your kids are dressed for the weather conditions. And we want them to join our weather alert team. I ready to help, guys. Weather Alert Kids on Action 3 News. Sponsored by Children's Hospital and Medical Center. KMTV.com for details. The Volkswagen Passat is heads above the competition, but we're not in the business of naming names. The fact is, it comes standard with an engine that's been called the benchmark of its class. Really, guys? I thought... 
It also has more rear legroom than other mid-sized sedans. And the Volkswagen Passat has a lower starting price than much better. The <sighs> Hurry in and lease the 2015 Passat S for $209 a month. Visit VWDealer.com today. Everywhere you look, the extras save you money at Nebraska Furniture Mart. This Samsung washer and dryer are $704 each. Save 20% off suggested retail. Get extra high definition with a 55-inch 4K Ultra HD TV, just $599. Take $70 off this accent chair's everyday low price. It's just $319. Give your tax refund some extra power with this exciting exhibition of extreme savings. Plus, 18-month financing store-wide. More extras mean more savings from Nebraska Furniture Mart. It's huge. It's bigger than you can imagine. It's Village Point Toyota's monumental lease event. Keep more precedents in your pocket. Drive away in a new Toyota with monumental savings. Get new Corollas, 10 to choose from with $229 to its signing, plus $229 a month. Or $249 to its signing, plus $249 a month on your choice of 20 Camrys. Plus 20 RAV4s, $299 to its signing, plus $299 a month. Don't miss the monumental lease event at Village Point Toyota. Child, things are gonna get easier. Ooh, child, things will get brighter. Things will get brighter. Ooh, child, things are gonna get easier. Ooh, child, things will get brighter. American Family Insurance has dedicated this commercial to help these people pursue their dreams. We'll also protect what you've achieved so you can fearlessly go after yours. Find out how we can help you dream fearlessly at AmFam.com. Don't miss Once Upon a Farm at the Omaha Children's Museum, KMTV.com for details. Reporters are peppering lawmakers about questions about the Department of Homeland Security funding bill that we mentioned earlier. Today, House Speaker John Boehner chose a different response. You can let him vote on it. Have you even had this discussion? <laughs> well, we make decisions, I'll let you know. That was no Valentine. Boehner was suggesting reporters won't get any more out of him. After the room broke out in laughter, he said, well, it was just a kiss. This weekend forecast brought to you by Hands Heating and Air Conditioning. Hello again, everyone. We're looking at some uh, snow moving in late in the afternoon on Saturday, continuing overnight. Moves out Sunday. Sunday looks warmer with a high of 34. Dozens of people chase down llamas on the lamb near Phoenix today. Check it out. Best video of the day, in my opinion. TV crews called in the chopper for this one. The llama drama started when the animals got loose on the way to patient therapy at a retirement home in Sun City. Look at this. Police chase them through traffic, backyards, parking lots. The llamas, we're happy to say, are back home with their owners tonight. <laughs> I don't know if I'm laughing at the llamas <laughs> or the Boehner kiss or both. It, this was an interesting block oh of news. Goodness. <laughs> Husker coach Tim Miles punished his players after a blowout loss to Iowa. So did their effort improve tonight against Ohio State? Phil has the answers and highlights next in sports.